take your seats. The show is about to begin. We will test out the Sony ZV-E10 and the Canon M50 Mark II to uncover the truths that lie beneath the surface. I've owned the ZV-E10 for almost two years and I've used it in a lot of real world situations like professional work and as my main B-cam for some of my most popular YouTube videos that you may have seen. Ever since the Canon M50 Mark II was released, I wanted to get my hands on it to test it out to see how it compares to the ZV-E10, so I rented it from Lens Rentals. The lenses that I used for the video test for the Canon M50 Mark II are the EF 15-45 f3.5-6.3 and the Sigma 30mm f1.4. This was a great matchup for the lenses that I already owned for the ZV-E10, which was the kit lens, the 16-50mm f3.5-5.6 and the 35mm f1.4. The models I used for the headshots are CJ and Ashley, so a big shout out to them. I'm not gonna beg you for a like for this video because I feel like if you like it, then you just will. If you've been in the market for a new beginner camera recently, then you've seen all the many options and quite frankly, it could get very overwhelming. When I'm asked which beginner camera I think is best, I always turn the question back to the person who's asking and I say, which camera is best for you and your situation? Because what might be good for me may not be good for you and what you need it for. I'm here to share with you my experience and lay out the specs of both cameras so you have more purchasing information. To find the answer to that very important question, let's journey down this road together and we will explore the specs, look at the similarities and differences, and most importantly, talk about the image quality and user experience. <laughs> To start off, we know that the ZV-E10 and the M50 Mark II are both marketed towards vloggers and content creators, but ultimately I would say both of these cameras are for beginners who want to learn more about how to use a camera. Just because both of these cameras are marketed as beginner cameras wouldn't stop me from using them on professional client shoots. This is coming from someone who used to use their iPhone as their main A cam. So I have no problem looking at both of these cameras as very capable. Those of you who are into photography are more inclined to pick up the M50 Mark II because it has a an electronic viewfinder. On the other hand, vloggers would be more inclined to pick up the ZV-E10 because it has features designed specifically for vlogging, such as background defocused and product showcase mode. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the differences, let's talk about the similarities. Both cameras are APS-C cameras. They have interchangeable lenses, have similar form factor, same resolution and frame rate, have nine buttons, weigh under 400 grams, both are not weather sealed, have electronic stabilization, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, a three inch articulating touchscreen, micro HDMI, mic input, hot shoes, one mounting point, can shoot time lapse, have auto and manual focus, and they both do not have ND filters. As you probably already know, the ZV-E10 and the M50 Mark II are both APS-C cameras. If you need clarification about what the differences between full frame and APS-C are, I made an entire video where I compared full frame to APS-C and you can check it out. I'll leave that one in the description. The short version is that full frame will be better for dynamic range and low light shots and APS-C will have cheaper lens options and will crop in 1.5 times the full frame equivalent for Sony and for Canon, it'll crop in 1.6 times the full frame equivalent. But sensor size by no means means that one camera is more professional than the other. Sensor size really has nothing to do with it. Most of the big box office Hollywood movies are shot on a Super 35 APS-C Airy camera. With that said, what's more important to me is the colors that are coming out of the camera, the usability, and ultimately the image quality in low light. Here at the Film Alliance, I think we can all agree that one of the hardest parts about creating a video is finding the right music that perfectly complements the story you are trying to tell. You want it to be perfect, and you want it to carry the viewer seamlessly through the end of the video. Track Club allows you to do this by being able to infinitely customize the stems of any song, muting or soloing instruments, adjusting volume levels, and speeding up or slowing the BPM to match the energy of the video. It gives you a greater level of creative control over your sound, all without leaving your browser. The first step in my creative process 
is deciding what filters match the vibe I'm going for or a particular part of a video. I've been able to take my videos to a whole new level since I started using Track Club. Try it out for yourself. I'll leave a link in the description for a free one month full access trial. Now back to our video. The M50 Mark II has been tested to have 13.4 stops of dynamic range, whereas the ZV-E10 is advertised to have 12 to 13 stops. When we are comparing two very capable cameras like this, I find that no matter what camera you do decide to purchase, it's really the lens that's on the front of it and the person that's behind it that makes a difference. So don't get too hung up on a lot of these details. Instead, I would suggest practicing more, getting out there and just shooting with it and understanding the principles of light and exposing your camera correctly. If you're interested in how to correctly use aperture priority or to expose your camera properly, I made videos about both of those topics and I'll leave those videos in the description as well. This leads me to the next real world question for you. What if the display is not sharp enough for you to nail focus? The LCD screen on the M50 Mark II has 1.04 million dots and the ZV-E10 has 921,600. I know the popular view on this is it doesn't really matter, but to me it does. If you're not hooked up to an external monitor and you have to use focus peaking on your screen when you want to ensure you're nailing focus, it does make a big difference and it does make it a lot more difficult to see, especially if you're in high key or bright environments. In the past, I've used the camera display before and when I got home from the shoot, I would look at it and something was just barely out of focus. It was definitely noticeable. So the LCD screen is important to me, and in this case, I would say the M50 Mark II comes out on top. The ZV-E10 has touch focus, but you cannot change the settings from the home screen, which you can do with the M50 Mark II. I found this to be pretty helpful with the Canon, especially when I was under a time crunch and I needed to nail exposure. I thought I set up the M50 Mark II shortcuts on the camera with the buttons on the outside, but as you know, once you get out there and you try to remember where you put everything and you can't find it, yeah, that was me. So the touchscreen on the M50 Mark II was super helpful that I was able to change exposure through the actual display with my finger rather than having to dive into the menu system like I would have had to do with the ZV-E10. Although both screens have articulating touchscreens, I try not to touch the screen at all because finger oils will grease up the screen, making it that much tougher to see, especially in sunny environments. So that leads us to the buttons on the outside of the camera. The more you have, the better, in my opinion. Because the more buttons and dials you have, the more customization you can implement, and in turn, the faster you can be efficient in the field, and the less you touch your screen. Both cameras have a similar amount of buttons and dials on the outside of the camera. For me, the ZV-E10 was easier to navigate because all of the cameras that I own are Sony cameras, so I'm a tad bit biased to Sony when it comes to the layout. When I'm using a different brand of camera like the Canon or a Sigma, my muscle memory will automatically click buttons where I would think buttons on the Sony camera were and then I just get all discombobulated and I suffer from vertigo. But the M50 Mark II does have a physical mode dial whereas the ZV-E10 has a digital mode button. I much prefer the physical dial on the outside of the camera because it's quicker, there's less steps in the workflow, especially if you're a hybrid shooter who switches between photo and video often. I give the buttons and the dials to the M50 Mark II. Speaking about being a hybrid shooter, let's talk about photography. The M50 Mark II has an electronic viewfinder while the ZV-E10 does not. This means that when we're out in the field and we have to really rely on the ZV-E10 to nail our framing or exposure, we have to rely on the display. Whereas with the M50 Mark II, we can look through the EVF so it's a lot more clear and it's shaded and we're not getting any sun reflection off of the screen. So especially for photography, the M50 Mark II definitely will come out on top especially for the framing aspect. Having an EVF makes a night and day difference when it comes to having these cameras. The displays are just not bright enough, especially in bright environments, and it could lead to misfocus or overexposing. I've been there and done that. Although when I'm on a tripod, I prefer to use the display rather than the EVF, especially if the camera's not at eye level and you'll end up with a crick in your neck. The M50 Mark II and the ZV-E10 both have 24 megapixel sensors and can shoot both JPEG and RAW. Both cameras have one mounting point and both have one hot shoe. The ZV-10 has an intelligent hot shoe, so that's another advantage to the ZV-10. This means you can purchase mics from Sony like the ECM M1 that connect without any external wires. I actually made a video about that mic and I'll leave that one in the description if you're interested in an external mic for your Sony camera. 
To me, an external mic is a must, especially if you want to do any type of vlogging or run and gun shooting. If you've been watching my channel for a while and you've seen some of my videos before, the first accessory I always purchase is a cage. To not only help me build out the camera to be able to put a nice microphone on the top, but to be able to build it out into, say, a rig with a monitor on top or an external battery on the back. But that's not everything. A cage is also very important because it will protect your camera in case you drop it. Now, if you don't buy a cage, but you do want to mount your cameras to a tripod and you put the mount on the bottom of your camera, when you put it on the bottom of the Canon M52, it's very close to the battery door, which means that you'll have to take the plate off of the Canon M50 Mark II in order to access the battery and the SD card. Whereas the ZV-10, the quarter mount thread is pretty far away from it, so you won't have to dismount everything. Seems like a small little spec, but I've definitely been in situations before where it's super annoying that you have to take your camera off of your gimbal or your tripod just to change out the battery or the SD card. Another thing to keep in mind is that the hot shoe on the ZV-10 is off to the left side of the camera. So if you wanted to put a top handle on it instead of a cage, then you would have a lopsided problem. Whereas if you wanted to put a top handle onto the Canon M50 Mark II and you didn't have a cage on it, it would still be centered up nice and balanced. Both cameras have micro HDMI and mic ports. The ZV-10 has a USB-C, which is better for streaming and transferring data faster, whereas the M50 Mark II has one of those older micro USB ports. A huge advantage for the ZV-10 is that it has a headphone port, which is great for monitoring your audio, especially while you're out in the field or on set, and you wanna make sure that there's no background noise or anything like that. You can use your audio meter inside the M50 Mark II, but that doesn't tell you if you have some of that background stuff going on like a refrigerator, and you're not gonna find out about that until you get home and you plug your SD card in, and then you listen to those videos and you realize that none of the audio is usable. Now that's not a spec that I would just gloss over and think it's not a big deal. It's probably one of the most important things that the ZV-10 has and why I would recommend picking up the ZV-10 over the Canon M50 Mark II. Speaking about audio. Instead of talking about the audio straight out of the camera, let's just listen and you can be the judge of which one you think has a better native mic. So here we are vlogging with the Canon M50 Mark II to see how it feels. I have the stabilization set to active or on or whatever you want to call it. Now I am vlogging with the Sony ZV-E10. Um, pretty noisy background and uh, I have active stabilization on because I'm trying to see how good it reacts in with that said, the native audio will always be much cleaner out of the ZV-E10 because it has a three directional mic. I always recommend using an external mic setup because that will always sound much better than the native audio out of these cameras. In fact, I think the native audio out of these cameras are specifically only to be used for reference, but that's just my opinion. But the good news is if you don't have a budget for an external mic that you can put on the camera or a lav mic that you can attach to your shirt and then run it to the camera wirelessly or however you wanna do it, then the native audio out of these cameras isn't all that bad. Just something to consider. Both cameras have electronic stabilization. The ZV-10 has electronic stabilization only, and because of the 1.5 times crop, your images will not be as smooth depending on the lens that you're using. A wider lens will always produce smoother footage when shooting handheld. The M50 Mark II does have electronic stabilization and produces a 1.6 times crop, so I would recommend picking up a gimbal for both cameras if it's in your budget. When it comes to handheld shooting, I would go with the ZV-10 because it has a 0.1 times advantage and I also thought it was a little bit more stabilized. Even though that sounds like a small difference, it's actually quite noticeable. Also, if you're picking up a lens, I would say purchase one that has OSS or stabilization inside of it if you plan on shooting handheld only. Another thing to consider is the Sony ZV-E10 records gyro data, which means you can take your footage into Sony's Catalyst Browse editing software and be able to stabilize your footage better and also remove any rolling shutter. Speaking about rolling shutter. Both cameras do have rolling shutter due to their electronic shutter, which is especially noticeable when you're shooting with longer lenses. You're never gonna do this with the camera, but it's nice to know if you're shooting a moving object, like when you're driving and pointing the camera outside and everything just kind of looks rubbery. If you're shooting with the zoom lens, I highly recommend you pick up a monopod like the YC Onion Panetta to stabilize that rolling shutter. If you wanna know more about the YC Onion monopod, I actually made a video about that one and I'll leave it in the description for your enjoyment.
If shooting in 4K24, the advertised recording limit for the ZV-E10 is 80 minutes, while the advertised recording limit for the M50 Mark II is 130 minutes. Definitely gives the M50 Mark II a huge advantage. If you're only shooting vlogs or short form videos, this shouldn't be a problem. I think this would pose more of a problem for someone who wants to shoot professional work. When it comes to overheating, the smaller body of the M50 Mark II, which has no internal fan, has an unpopular reputation for overheating, especially in warmer climates. It's said to overheat in temperatures after 30 minutes of shooting. I actually did not have any overheating issues while I had the camera at all, and I was in a pretty warm and sunny environment for an extended amount of time. The ZV-10 also has no internal van, but does not seem to have a reputation of overheating issues like the Canon M50. If you are experiencing any overheating issues for the ZV-10, you just need to go into the power setting option and then turn auto power off temp to high. The low light performance of both cameras will be relatively the same because they are both APS-C cameras. I've heard and can confirm that the base ISO out of the ZV-E10 when shooting an S-Log3 is ISO 100. And same thing with the Canon M50 Mark II, the native ISO is 100. Also, something to keep in mind is that I start to see a grain once I start straying up into the 1600 range when it comes to ISO. The ISO range for the ZV-E10 is 100 to 32,000, while the M50 Mark II is 100 to 12,800. Both cameras are not weather sealed. This is definitely something to keep in mind when going out to shoot in rainy or snowy environments. In fact, they're not even moisture resistant. So try to keep both of these cameras as dry as possible. They both have autofocus and manual focus. Okay, I don't care what anyone says, the autofocus out of the ZV-E10 was way better than the M50 Mark II. It beat it in both photos and video. Face tracking and locking onto what I wanted it to lock onto was way easier and more efficient. I actually had to throw the M50 Mark II into manual focus a couple times just to rack focus to make sure I was focusing on what I wanted it to focus on. If there's a setting or something inside of the camera that I missed, then please let me know in the comment section. Both cameras take one SD card, which will make it difficult if you're hoping to have a backup card reader. You can always purchase an Atomos Ninja 5 with its own media, which will put you back another $700 to make sure that you have that redundancy. This is decently a big disadvantage for both cameras, especially if you wanna use these cameras for professional work. From the real world use of what I use both of these cameras for, I was really surprised to see how long the M50 Mark II battery lasted compared to the ZV-E10. But there was a huge advantage to the ZV-E10 over the M50 Mark II, and that is you can charge the ZV-E10 battery via USB-C cable, whereas the M50 Mark II, you have to literally take the battery out and put it inside of a charger on the wall. This posed a huge problem for me, especially when I was traveling and I left the charger at home. You have to ask yourself what you're planning on shooting. You can clearly cross over both cameras for different uses. You can use the ZV-E10 as a vlog camera and the M50 Mark II to shoot sports and wildlife. If you plan on making talking head YouTube videos like this or vlogging, then I would go with the ZV-E10. And if you plan on shooting with both video and photos, then I would go with the M50 Mark II. Remember that if you're on a budget, you'll wanna go with the ZV-E10 because the lens options will be much cheaper. Also, there are a lot more lens options for the ZV-E10 than the Canon M50 Mark II. That could be a huge advantage, especially if you really wanna take your videos to the next level. Overall, the M50 Mark II is a great camera. The video quality was great, and I love the viewfinder. I love the colors out of Canon as well. The autofocus did have me a little bit sketched out, and it's for that reason I much prefer the Sony ZV-E10, but it's also probably because I'm biased. I hope this video helps you make a decision, and I'd love to know what you decide to buy and why. I'm Joe with the Film Alliance, and I'll see you guys on the next video.